Apple said, hey, Quinn, do you want to spend $5,300 on an iMac? And I said, uh, no. So I built my own instead, and I saved nearly $2,000 in the process. This video is sponsored by Dashlane, the simple, secure way to manage your passwords. Learn more through the link below. The idea for this video was actually pretty simple. Buy a base model iMac and then gut the inside so that I could put inside a better CPU, more solid state storage, and an obscene amount of RAM. Why? Because, well, I souped up my Mac Pro a few months ago and it's doing great, but I was still using that cheap 1440p monitor, which is obviously not ideal for 4K video editing. And trying to find a 5K display is basically impossible. They're either discontinued, they are extremely expensive, or they're incompatible with Mac Pro. That's right, the ultra-fine 5K display that Apple co-developed with LG and sells in the Apple stores runs on the Mac Pro display units at 1440p. Not 5K, not even 4K, Apple. So I bought a base model iMac that I could upgrade myself. I also decided to pay an extra $300 so that I could upgrade from the stock Fusion drive to Apple's annoyingly proprietary, but in my opinion, necessary NVMe SSD for a hyper fast boot drive. And then I bought the rest of my upgrades separately. I bought an Intel i7-7700K CPU that was going to replace the i5-7600 that came with the iMac. I bought a two terabyte Crucial MX300 SSD that I could use as a secondary, very fast internal storage drive. So that brings the internal storage of this machine up to 2.5 terabytes, 500 that are NVMe very fast, and then two terabytes that are SATA, still quite fast. And then I bought 64 gigs of G-Skill DDR4 memory. 64 gigs of RAM is excessive, but I wanted to match Apple's most expensive offering as best as I could. Oh, and I bought a few extra but necessary tools to make this all work. My total price came just shy of $3,500, and that is certainly not a drop in the bucket. But compared to the nearly $5,300 that Apple charges for basically the same configuration, I feel like I did pretty good, especially since I have an extra CPU and eight gigs of RAM that I could sell on Craigslist if I want. Much to my surprise, installing everything was easier than I expected. That said, the 5K display is glued to the aluminum chassis with some very strong tape, but iFixit makes this cute little cutting wheel that loosens the adhesive without damaging any of the sensitive ribbon cables that kind of edge the perimeter of the display. And this is the best $8 you'll ever spend. Don't risk breaking the screen with guitar picks, heat guns, and other crappy instruments that some other websites recommend. Just get the wheel, it is awesome. With some patience and the wheel, the display will come loose from the chassis and underneath there's two ribbon cables that you have to undo. Uh, once you do that, voila, the Mac is ready for surgery. Uh, after that, I started removing the left speaker assembly, which is pretty simple. And then I found my way to removing the power supply. Now, this is a completely exposed PSU, which can cause serious injury or death if you handle it improperly. But as long as you hold the board by the edges and you don't touch any of the solder joints, you'll be fine. Once I removed the PSU, my attention turned to the right speaker, which is actually slightly harder to remove than the left, but it still wasn't that bad. What really surprised me is how much room inside this computer is taken up by the speaker assemblies. Wild, isn't it? Next, I address the fan. Yep, fan. One. There is a singular small fan that cools the CPU, the GPU, and the GPU VRMs. Now, once I had removed the fan, I removed the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antennae, and then I was ready to pull the motherboard out. And there's a ton of screws that hold it in place, but you just gotta take your time and find all of them. It's not that big of a deal. Once I removed the motherboard, it was finally time to take off the cooler that is shared by both the GPU and the CPU. I cleaned up all the old thermal paste with rubbing alcohol and a microfiber cloth. And now I can install our new sexy i7-7700K and then put the cooler right back on. But wait, before I screw the motherboard back in, I need to plug in Apple's proprietary data power cable combo for our SSD. Now, luckily Apple hasn't changed this part since 2012, so you can find these on eBay for really cheap. Once I get most of the components installed back into the case, I can turn our attention to that two terabyte SSD. <clears throat> Since the mounting bracket in the Mac is for a three and a half inch hard drive, I needed a cheap adapter from Amazon. Luckily I got one for six bucks, I think. 
I also needed an OWC thermal sensor cable. Now, the hard drive that Apple uses from the factory has a proprietary controller on it for reporting the drive temperatures to the motherboard. And if you don't have this cable, the iMac doesn't know what temperature your SSD is at, and it runs the fan speed, the singular fan, at 100% all the time. It is unbearable. So even though this cable is $40 and it's kind of a ripoff, you just, you need it. And that's about it. I used this custom cut adhesive kit that I found on Amazon to seal the Mac back up, which was well worth the money I paid. And voila, we're done. Oh, I do have to pop in the RAM though. <laughs> so I opened the RAM door. Thanks for at least giving us that Apple. Installed the 64 gigs of RAM and now we're done. Yeah, yeah, but how does the machine actually perform? really well. In Geekbench, my scores were about 30% higher with the i5 I swapped with, which is not that surprising. However, it was also 8% better than Apple's fully loaded iMac with the exact same CPU model. Now, this trend continued in my Cinebench results as well. And it doesn't really make sense. The scores shouldn't be that different between my 7700K iMac and Apple's 7700K iMac with the same amount of RAM, the same CPU, and even the same boot drive. 8% is outside of the margin of error. So either I got really, really lucky with the Silicon Lottery and got the best 7700K in the world, or maybe, just maybe, Apple could be buying the runs, the lower performing 7700K from Intel on discount for less money. I don't know. What I do know is that my 5K iMac outbenchmarked every single computer in Apple's lineup. All right, Big Shot, what are the downsides to this build? Well, there's really two big problems in my mind. Number one, you void your warranty the second you even get that iFixit cutting wheel near the display. And to some, losing a warranty on a brand new computer is a big deal. To me, no warranty is worth the $1,800 that I saved, so I don't really care. And number two, my GPU is worse than the fully loaded Apple model. At the same time, all of the GPUs that Apple uses in their computers suck for gaming. And in applications where they should excel, like Final Cut Pro, where I expected Apple's 5K iMac with the Radeon Pro 580 to outperform mine, it didn't. In both the Bruce X benchmark and in my own video export test, my Mac was about 5% faster, which if we return to having a faster CPU would imply that even Final Cut Pro is using the CPU more than it is using the GPU. Yeah, yeah, PC Master Race, I know. I got suckered into buying another Mac. But by doing the upgrades myself, I got a faster machine than what Apple would have sold me with more storage for $1,800 less. And it only took me like an hour of work. To make that hour back, and a whole lot more by the way, you should check out Dashlane, who is our sponsor for this video. Using the same password for everything is, is a really bad idea. Dashlane makes your life secure by automatically generating complex passwords for new websites you visit. Dashlane then stores all of your different logins securely. And then when you visit that website again, they log in automatically. Dashlane Premium does even more cool stuff. You can sync all of your logins between your PC, your Mac, your iOS and Android devices, and it even backs up to the cloud. So if your tech gets lost or stolen, your private and important data is still recoverable. You can even share logins with friends and family so that they can, for example, log into your Netflix account without knowing your Netflix password. You can change insecure passwords at the click of a button. This is amazing. Instead of going to the website, logging in, finding the reset password form, entering your old password, entering the new one, entering the new one again, blah, blah, blah. One click and you're done. Dashlane changes the password for you automatically. Dashlane does all of this and more. Get a free account today by visiting the link in the video description. Well, folks, that's all for me. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you didn't, that other button seems to work okay too. Leave a comment below and I'll try and respond. But most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.